Ahoy, mateys! Okay, people, welcome back to another Froosh Overview. Today, let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends X-Men Chaod Wave. Now, I know the way I pronounce that annoys a few people, because apparently in the animated series it was pronounced Chode, but I don't care about the animated series. Blasphemy! When I was a kid and the Star Jammers would appear, I would always read it as ch odd. C H apostrophe O D. Ch odd. Ch odd. But also as a kid, I pronounced it Paladin instead of Paladin because it was just text form. We didn't have Google to go click. Paladin. But in that case, Paladin is a word. You know, it's used in other places. Ch odd is a name. It, an alien name on top of that. So it's going to be pronounced differently, just like a lot of proper names. Am I focusing on that too much instead of getting right to the figures like I'm supposed to? Now, it's been a little while since I've gotten a whole wave of Marvel Legends, but this is X-Men. And while I'm not completely invested in all the characters here, I wanted the Build-A-Figure, going back to Chaud. And there's a couple that I absolutely needed, so I got Astonishing X-Men, Emma, and Cyclops early. I've already done the full-on reviews for these two. You can find that here, if I remember to put it up here. But having them on the shelf for a little while now, I have some extra thoughts that I'd like to add to the review. Or, I can't remember if I actually said them back then. Either way, I'm gonna hit these really, really quick and then get to opening some packaging. Okay, for Emma, it's not really anything groundbreaking. I'm gonna reiterate that this looks just like Astonishing X-Men Emma. It's just Cassidy's art brought to life. Yes, the arms are hindered, mostly because of the cape being attached to the front and then wrapped directly around the shoulders. So she's not gonna be raising her arms up. But the single elbows make it worse because the arms come forward and then you can only get to here. If it was double, at least it could come up and around the cape. You know, to get closer to her face, to do the old hand to the temple telepath thing. I still plan on doing a cloth cape. I'm told that if you pull the cape off here, you're left with big old rectangle peg holes, but I've got to try it. But more than that, I want to see a diamond form Emma. I want to see this in translucent plastic, which would really just be visible here, here, and here. The rest would still look just like this. But I would like to have some kind of physical representation of her power, and that would be the perfect way to do it. And then for Cyclops, the longer he sat on the shelf, the more I realized he is a bit short. I would have liked to seen just a little more height. In fact, I think it's mostly in the torso. If it had extended up a little more, bring the shoulders up, that, of course, the top of the head moves <laughs> when you go with the torso, but it would have brought the hands up a little bit, leave the legs where they are, and it would have been perfect. As is, this is still my favorite Cyclops. This one is on the top of the X-Men shelf. In the review, I talked about this being a removable piece and it had this little energy smoke effect coming up off of it. I think I talked about snipping it off and that's exactly what I did. You get up close, you can kind of see where it was cut off, but at normal distance, standing on the shelf, in normal lighting, never notice. So if that was a deal breaker for you, all you need is some side cutters or a pair of clippers, a, a sharp blade, something. Two seconds, snip, <laughs> done. And now we need more Astonishing X-Men characters. With those out of the way, I definitely have a pecking order here because I'm a classic X-Men kind of guy. So Corsair and Fang were highest on my list, right under Cyclops and Emma. I was also big into new X-Men, so Quentin was high on the list, but maybe not in this costume. And then after that, there's Chamber and Monet, who I've read mostly in X-Factor Investigations, I think, so I'm not as familiar with this costume. Chamber, I read even less. I guess I just missed out on this whole era, or his storylines, or whatever. So we're going to start with Chamber. But I think this is going to be one of the cases where the figure wins me over. Just seeing how well done this is, I want to know more about Chamber. Well, I've read enough to know that his power just erupted through his jaw and upper chest. Just then it comes around and engulfs his head. And there, oh man, they nailed it. There's no lips to paint darker like they've been doing lately. Here, it's almost a cracking and again, 
I've seen enough to know that that's his normal look. But then the whited out eyes, the shading around that, the angry eyebrows, the hair flaring back. Ooh, this is just exciting looking. Not to mention the yellowy orange accents over the translucent orangey plastic. And then the thinner it gets, the more it fades to kind of a brighter orange. It achieves the effect it's going for. Here's another zoom in on the face because I love it. Oh, and I guess the slight cracking goes up on the forehead too. That's cool. But then there's the costume. I think that this cloth is made of something that blocks his power because I have seen pictures where he's wrapped his face too and that would have been a neat alternate head, but we'll get to that. So there they have that wrapped mummy look. Then there's the leather jacket. I'm not sure if the arms are reused. They seem fairly generic, but they don't seem to match up perfectly with any of the figures I pulled off the shelf. I think the torso overlay part is new because it definitely has that leather jacket look to it. And another one of my favorite things, the silver paint punching in the buttons and the zippers. That just adds so much to it. Then below the waist, that's why I pulled Colson down because from the belt, all the way to the soles of the feet, that's reused from there, which is a shame for two reasons. One, that Colson is kind of a bear to stand up. The bottom of the feet are kind of curved and the ankles don't want to go forward enough to counteract the backwards fall down. I even have this bent forward at the waist a little and if you push these as far as they go and then kind of kick the crotch forward, there you go. On top of that, it makes it look like he's wearing this cool leather jacket and then some slacks and dress shoes. Seriously, dress shoes. Along with the arms hanging too low, the bottom of the sleeve is at the crotch and then the hands seem kind of big when you get this far away from it. Fury legs would have added slightly more height and some thickness to the legs. Or I've seen people suggest the Marvel Legends Luis. I love, love, love this but then you get here and it's not as impressive. None of that matters in action poses, except for getting him to stand because once you bend the legs, you can't get the ankles forward enough to, dang it. I don't think I'd go full biker. Those legs seem too big, but does this, oh, it does. That could be interesting. While the head's off, articulation wise, ball at the top of the neck with a hinge going down. The fire fits the shoulders, so it's gonna get in the way. There's some up, that's a lot of lava beard, so there's no down. Tiny bit of tilt and then side to side about right there. Pin coming out to the shoulder rotates around. You're gonna run into the fire there even. Then there's a hinge that goes to about right there. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, oh, all the way up. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Hinge mid torso crunches to about right there. Arcs back. Swivel at the waist. Get to the legs. There's a ball at the hip. Allows for this. This. And swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes up. Oh, all the way there too. Make fire come from here. Hinge at the ankle goes back. Forward is almost non-existent. And then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there's two open clawed expressive type hands. And those pop right out and you can swap in two fists, which I like a little bit better because they don't accentuate the length of the arms as much. They still seem to hang low, but... <sighs> and then like I mentioned, it would have been awesome to get another head with the wraps around it, with the fire suppressed, him hanging around headquarters or going about town or whatever. But again, the fire is exciting. Although now that I called it a lava beard, I can't unsee that. For Monet, it's definitely a case of do not go with first impressions, especially when it comes to action figures. Because I had some preconceived notions here that simply aren't true. In the promo images, the head looks small or the body look big, one or the other. And now that I have it in hand, it's not as bad. Don't get me wrong, the head could probably be sized up slightly, but it's not bugging me near as much here. But there's also the first impression of getting it directly out of the package. At least with mine, this is what it looks like out of the tissue paper, out of the box. And I thought, huh. Then I realized she's crotch forward, she's hunched a little. So once I straighten the legs up and then crank the torso back into the right position, and then brought the head for not that much. Basically getting the figure all straightened out, everything kind of fell into place. Another misconception I had was her size. Look at her next to chamber, she's shorter. So <laughs> I thought this was gonna be a huge body and it's not. The upper torso has a zipper and then the X logo and a collar that I don't think I've seen before. And then, oh, <laughs> I thought that was part of the shoulder sculpt, but it's a softer piece with a ring going between the shoulder and the torso. And then the gauntlets are an overlay piece 
and so are the shin guards. I've seen people take this off and put it on other bodies, including males. I saw a sink custom taking these parts off, giving him that Generation X look. And I've also seen people put husk heads on this body. Does that mean they're just gonna push through with the rest of Generation X, have these overlays interchangeable between different bodies? Oh, and the belt is an overlay too. So I guess if you take that away, and this, and this, and this, and this, and the head, and the upper torso, is the rest just your basic Marvel Legends female body? Then there's X logos tampoed on the back of the gauntlets on the hand guards. Gold running up the zipper, red and blue and black on the belt and unfortunately i have a nick ah! i have a nick in the paint right in the center of it and while we're talking paint blemishes there's also a black dot up here on the forehead the face while painted beautifully still has a slight cartooniness to it also there's a sheen difference from torso down to here this is shinier plastic like i mentioned monet to me is x factor so Mm, I've seen somebody make this swap, and I'm not going to need this modern Mockingbird for too much longer with the classic coming out. This may work as a good base, and then I come in, make the changes to the paint. I don't think she had these armored pieces down here. The hands, maybe this, bring in the red piping. The belt is sculpted onto the body, but hell, I think that works too, really. Then I'd have to do the rest of that team, huh? <laughs> But again, while it's exposed, articulation-wise, there's a ball going up into the head with a hinge going down into the neck. Then you have this long flowing hair. Not a lot of up. These are softer on the front, get out of the way, can look down. Lots of tilt. Side to side, you gotta kinda work around the hair. Pin coming out to the shoulder, like we talked about. The shoulder pad, you gotta kinda let it ride around with the arm, bring it back. That gets out of the way of the hinge that comes up to here. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes, oh! further than I thought. I figured the overlay would get in the way and it does crash right there a little bit, but not bad. Swivel at the wrist, hinge in and out, and that is soft too, so if you need it back here, it'll go. Dumbbell joint mid torso, get some hula hoop action. Ball at the hip goes here and here and here. Swivel at the thigh, double knee again, comes most of the way ah, bing. ankle hinge goes back kind of flexes into the overlay forward front facing pin for rocker for accessories out of the package monet comes with a left fist and a right clawed hand and then you can swap in the opposites left clawed hand right fist just to show overlay comes off there's a bit of gold paint down at the bottom to make that blend in there. Like I said earlier, this is not my Kid Omega. This is not my version of Quentin Choir. But now that I have it in hand, oh, did you think I was gonna say, this is now my favorite costume, this is my Quentin Choir? No, but I can appreciate this a lot more now. There's a simplicity to it, and there's nothing wrong with that. The head sculpt is unmistakably Choir. For me, it's mostly the bubblegum pink hair on top. But then his face has that cocky kind of, yelp, I'm better than than everybody else. I just realized he's the MJF of mutants before MJF was MJF. And I've never read anything with this costume in it, so I don't know if these are psychic type glasses or something since it matches his weapon, spoiler. These are made out of the soft material and glued down or pegged in at his nose. But below the head, the body is complete reuse of the Amazing Fantasy 15 Spider-Man. To see that body used again, looking good, the proportions, the articulation, <laughs> Maybe that's a contributing factor to me liking this more than I thought I would. It's cast in this dark, dark, dark gray color that I thought was black until I got it in hand. And I like that because it reflects the light a little different. The only paint is the pink. Oh, that's a lie. There's also some flesh tone at the end of the fist. The lines are all crisp and nice and straight and go all the way around to the back. And then the curves come around, the omega symbols on the shoulders, and then stripes with some kicks on the back, on the wrists. With some minimal paint stripping, you can have a nice clean Spider-Man base body. In fact, now that I have them side by side, is the base plastic color nearly the same on both? That's interesting. And if you doubt me, check it out. Spider-Man had those peg holes for the web wings. Quentin has those too. Basically, it comes down to being a guy in spandex but i do like the color scheme i kind of like the simplicity of it and i really like the base body 
So, so yeah. Articulation wise, there is a ball at the top of the neck with a hinge going down, way up, buries the chin. Not a lot of tilt though, left and right. Butterfly joints at the shoulders go back and forward. Pin outside of that allows the arm to rotate all the way around with a hinge up to here. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow all the way up. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Dumbbell joint mid torso gets some crunch forward, some back, some tilt, some tilt, some rotation. Then there's a hinge below that. Kick there and then full-on crunch goals. There's no reason to arc back this far, but it does it. Ball coming out to the hip, goes to here and here and out. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh, push it to the limit, limit. Swivel mid shin or boot line, hinge at the ankle, goes way back, way forward, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Kid Omega comes with two fists. Yeah, 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 just like the rest, they all pop out. And you can swap in a couple of grip hands. And those are for his psychic, gun of some kind? His telekinesis weapon? I'm not quite sure. I just know that this is reuse. Just cast in a pretty pink plastic. But he has no trigger finger, so the grip kind of just rotates around in there. I guess he could trigger it with his mind, but we're going to fix that. Oops. Unless I just lost the gun. Simple slice with the X-Acto blade. There we go. That looks better. And grips better. And that's not bad. It adds a little something to a very simple visual. Never let it be said that I'm against simple costumes because Fang was higher up on my list. And that's essentially varying degrees of browns with some bone accents. And don't forget an angry hairy head. At first I thought it was this Sabretooth body and then I realized no, it's the color scheme making me think that. Sabretooth is broader and bulkier. This is actually the Spider-Man UK body and various other people like Electro. This has more costume details to it like the wrinkles pulling tight here and here and down at the knee. But it has been updated with pinless joints. Have some more little folds on the ankles and on the back of the hands. And then some deeper grooves like across the back and the butt crack. Then all the strings of bones or claws or teeth or whatever they are, it's all separate overlay pieces. The belt, you can move around. You can raise it up if you want. It's only held in place by the groove of the waist articulation. For the necklace, it's a separate piece, just plugged into a hole here in the back. But I've got it held down with the beard right now. If you let it go, it wants to pop up a little bit, kind of float above the shoulders. That may be a glued down type situation. Down at the legs, out of the package, they were right there. They're kind of stuck, but kind of like uh, Jim Lee Cyclops. If you get too rowdy with it, they can get out of place and they fall down around the ankle. They kind of snap into the cut joint there. It's the forearms that were down around the wrists when I got them out of the box. There is a sculpted groove right there that helps it stay up because once I got it into position, again, if you're rubbing across it or trying to get all crazy with it, it will fall down. With those all being overlays, hopefully someday we'll get Wolverine in this costume. When this was first announced, I saw a lot of comments asking why there's not an alternate Logan head to get that out of the way. That's because this body is completely wrong for Wolverine. Then again, Fang is listed at about Wolverine's size, so this may not be the best body for this character. But if you take the bone pieces off and put it on here, give them a paint job, Hmm. The fang head we do get is nice. The hair coming back, the pointy ears. Like I always say, I'm not a huge fan of the open screaming mouth, but you can see the fangs on fang. <laughs> and then the rest of the face is kind of animalistic, almost werewolf. The head seems to be slightly out of scale with that, running on the small side. But like most figures, once you get in an action pose, it's not as prominent. Oh! So overall, I like it, but to point out the obvious, once again, it seems like the different plastics are cast in different colors. You have the harder plastic of the torso, doesn't quite match the softer plastic of the arms, and it really sticks out at the joints. Same thing down here at the knee. So yeah, that seems to be an ongoing problem that really needs to get fixed. Going over articulation, once again, there's a ball up top with a hinge down low, can look way up. Beard kind of gets in the way of down, but not bad. Very, very slight tilt, look both ways before crossing the street. Pin coming out to the shoulder, rotates all the way around, then a hinge, I said a hinge with very tight detents, come up to there. And there's that because I got rowdy. I'm gonna leave it down for the double elbow. 
swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Crunch-tastic. Arc back horrific. The belt does hide the swivel at the waist that turns side to side. Ball at the hip, high kicks, and not a lot of back, and not a lot of out. That's it. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, bends back. Swivel at the boot, once again hidden by that overlay. Hinge at the ankle goes back. Forward, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Fang has big open expressive hands. I think they're slight little claws at the end of the fingers. Just barely. And then there's two fists, but I'm not going to use those. It's Fang. He's going to have these hands. And then finally, there is Corsair, space pirate extraordinaire, leader of the Star Jammers, father to the Summers Brothers, fashion icon. Look at that mustache. Fittingly, Corsair uses the Vulcan body for the most part. Same shoulders, same arms, same legs, same feet, same crotch pieces because genetics. Different torsos. The muscles do not line up here. Vulcan has a lot of these little bumpies. Corsair, not so much. Vulcan's abs rise and then dip down over here. Corsair's is lower on the right side and then raises up a little bit, while also being a softer sculpt. The big giveaway are the pecs. Vulcan's are very defined. The costume goes down into the crevice. Corsair has some fabric stretches happening. Same basic shapes if you're sculpting muscle men, <laughs> that's just anatomy, but you can see that Vulcan's are a lot more prominent, a lot more defined. Corsair's a little older and it shows. I think the butterfly joints themselves are the same. It's just a new torso piece, I guess, to distinguish the two and add this kick-ass collar. That made me think maybe Banshee's sharing a torso, but that's not the case. Similar, but no fabric folds here, and the abs are just slightly different, along with the collar being thinner on Corsair. Same basic shape, but not quite. The head seems large. He's just kind of stuck up there on the top of the body. Skew's a little more realistic, which I don't mind at all, but we're talking about comic book superheroes. Like putting him beside Vulcan, there's a definite difference in cranium size. Same thing with Scott. Not a deal breaker though, at least for me. I know different people have different head sizes. The symbol on the chest painted very nice and clean. Nice straight lines here too. I think the black is painted on. This is cast this is paint, and there's not a big difference there. Also a nice straight line here running all the way around. But the differences between the different plastics isn't as noticeable here as on Fang or Vulcan, really. Vulcan had the darker knees. Not the case... Well, okay, maybe just a shade different, but it's not going to be noticeable under regular light. And then you have the blue of the overlay belt with some gold painted on very nicely back there. And then the blue popped collar moving up to the very handsome head. Look at that hair just blowing in the breeze. The sideburns, the mustache, lips may be slightly dark like we've been seeing a lot lately. I guess there could have been shoulder pads, but the big thing that jumps out at me is the red bandana. I think of the belt, the collar, and the headband matching, even though he's been depicted with a red headband. Still, classic goodness right there. Ooh, need more star jammers. For articulation, guess what? There's a ball up in there. There's also a hinge. Can look up, down all the way. Ooh, not bad tilt. Well, I guess it's not so much tilt as it is rotate. Look both ways before crossing the galaxy. Butterfly joint goes back and forward, and it's another one of those where as you raise the arm up, the further you can go with the butterfly. Pin coming out to the shoulder, rotates around and then hinges up. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow. Does the pirate glove get in the way? Not much. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge up and down because trigger finger hand. Very crunchy, very arky. Swivel at the waist, hidden by the belt, but is revealed the more you move it. Ball at the hip, comes up to 90 and back a little and out. Swivel at the thigh and, oh, you can see the black is painted. There's red plastic under there. Double knee, oh. Yep. Bing. Swivel mid shin. Looks like it's not completely seated. The left doesn't have that problem. I may have to pop that apart. Hinge at the ankle goes back. Forward. Front facing pin for rocker. Out of the package, Christopher Summers has two trigger finger hands. And I forgot to point out that the left is also up and down hinge. That's because he comes with a space pirate gun. It's kind of futuristic, but it's also very high seas. No cutting here. Goes right into the hand. Shiver me asteroids, matey. It doesn't stop there. We are in deep with the classic goodness, like this space cutlass. Kind of loose in the grip hand, but works great with the up and down hinge. Ooh. Walk the space plank. 
matey. If you don't want them holding the sword, there's also a little loop here on the belt that acts as a sheath, so you can store it away in there if you want to. And if you're doing that, you can swap in these two hands, but why would I want to do that? He's got the awesome weapons to hold. I don't want to hide away the few accessories in this wave. Unless you consider Build-A-Figure pieces accessories. If that's the case, ba boom Let's see, this is going to be the left leg and the right. Plug the right arm in. Left goes on the left because anatomy! It seems like a little itty bitty head ball, but the head isn't the biggest either, so you simply plug that on and you're done. And here's Cha'ad to go with the Star Jammers, to go with Corsair. This is based on the Abomination body, which has been both a Build-A-Figure and I think this one came in a box set. Same shoulders, the same upper arms, the same torso, and then the rest of the body too. Same crotch, same legs, same feet. The hands are kind of the same sh well I say that, not really. I was gonna say they were the same shape, but these are definitely different with the scales running all the way down the back and the fingers. And then the lower arm's been modified to continue that scale, that layer look, all the way up to the elbow and to add these fins. And the heads are different too, of course. Not a lot of paint going on here. It's relying a lot on the sculpt itself to cast shadows, to do its own shading. The high points do have some yellow overspray on them just to give it some highlights, but you get back and it doesn't really jump out at you. The backbone sticking out is painted a different color. That's odd. I expected to turn it over and see no paint on the back, but there's almost more paint on the back. The belt is a big leathery textured overlay piece with some gold paint for the buckle. And then the head looks good. It looks like Cha'ad. There's the red eyes poking out from the darkness, the teeth showing a little bit, the ear fins, the jaw hinges open and you can see a black tongue in there and it's just like, hey everybody, where'd you go? I'm looking for you. Very soft so that's not going to poke your eye out, but it's not without its gripes. One, it could be bigger. A lot of renditions has him just lumbering, towering over the rest of the Star Jammers. I feel like this needed more width. The shoulders out to here and just poof. Two, it has the same problem as the Abomination body because it uses the Abomination body. The legs are spread out. There's a lot of gap here, less torso. The proportions are kind of wonky. I guess three could be the lack of paint, but I already talked about that. Four, there's too many fingers, as in four fingers and a thumb. There should be only three fingers and a thumb, depending on what you call fingers, okay? I'm gonna have to come in here and just cut and sand and see what I can do there. Five, he doesn't have his gun thing. That would have been a pretty sweet pack-in, especially considering the amount of accessories each figure got, as in each one <laughs> didn't get a lot. They did include Kriri! That's how it's spelled. Kriri! And you can have it by itself just hanging out because it has a nice standing position, or you can perch it up on Chad's shoulder. It won't work right here because I'm angled down, but you stand him up, you stick it out there, broad shoulder, get some balance to it. There you go. Articulation, like I mentioned, there's a big old opening jaw. Anybody have any fish food? Is a little loose, it falls open, but the further you have the head down, the more the body itself holds it shut. So, eh. There's a ball joint going up into the head with a hinge on the body, so can look up and then down. A little tilt, and then it rotates on the ball to look left and right. Pin coming out to the shoulder rotates all the way around, then hinges up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Single hinge at the elbow comes up to eh, almost 90. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge, big detents there. One click forward for the abs, and then one click back. Swivel at the waist, hidden by the belt. Ball coming out to the hip, goes to here and back, and and out. Swivel at the thigh has some muscles hiding it a little bit. Single knee, again very heavy detents, comes up to 90. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, what you see is what you get. Again, I would have liked that big space gun thing. And no, I'm not calling Kree its own accessory. It's its own thing. For comparisons, here's the whole wave side by side, bringing Emma and Scott back in. Emma stands slightly over six inches tall. Chamber is almost six and a quarter. Fang is slightly above six and a quarter. Kid Omega is six and an eighth. Corsair is six and a half. Monet is six and an eighth. Cyclops is six and a quarter. And then Cha'ad is almost eight inches tall. Right off the bat, here's the obvious comparison. And again, Cha'ad, he's big, he's taller, he's got some bulk, but Oh, it would have been 
cool to see him just huge. Then here's the Summers family all together. Again, this whole new sculpt for Cyclops does run small. I wish he was as tall as Corsair and Vulcan. And even though the Havoc figure isn't that old, I feel like it already needs an upgrade. Or I guess I could just customize it because it's a black body with some circles on the chest. And it makes it look even more outdated when I bring in the animated series Cyclops. Fang looks great next to Gladiator, but speaking of upgrades, I'd like to see a new version of him too. I'm not quite sure who to compare Chamber and Monet with, so I'm gonna stick them with Vulcan and Wolverine. Here's Kid Omega next to my custom Quentin Choir and my custom Beak. But to give you a better idea of scale next to retail figures, here's Vulcan and Cyclops again. So at the end of the day, it's an X-Men wave. It's my steak and potatoes, but it's not my favorite X-Men wave. There's characters that I'm not really invested in. This version of Monet, perfectly acceptable, just not a costume I know her for. Same thing for Kid Omega. I like this look more now that I have it in action figure form, but that's not my Quentin. Chamber, I love the look here, again, from the waist up, but you gotta know he's leaning back, right? There's an odd number of characters in this wave, so somebody had to be center. So I knelt him down in order to have Cha'ad visible. Fang gives me some classic goodness, but makes me want more Imperial Guard. And then it's the same for Corsair, except give me more Star Jammers. We need Raza and Hepzibah. Because while Cha'ad has its problems, I still like that he's being added to the group. Then there's also Scott and Emma, but again, I did a separate review for those, and if they were included in today's overall rankings, they would be one and two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that's just me personally. We all collect different, we all have our own separate wants and needs. So if you see something here that you want, go buy it, because that's what you do. You, you see something you want, and you purchase it. You acquire it and then you decide for yourself whether you like it or not. And if you don't like it, back to the store it goes. But if you do like it, up on the shelf. Or if you kinda like it, <laughs> in my shoes, you customize it, change it up, make it more to your liking. And there's a couple of those here. <laughs>